Jason. Thank you for joining in. No, so. Uh, Pleasure thank you for your time. Could you introduce yourself to our readers and listeners? Of course. I'm Jason Craig. I am the brand director on Helen Park Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, the Orkney Single Malt with Viking Soap. So that's a new brand world created for Highland Park? It is. Um, it is. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how it came into being. Sure. And, um, have you been working with an agency who is responsible for this? Yeah. Brand? <laughs> the appetite for Highland Park is fantastic. For those who know Highland Park, the liquid is wonderful. But what it lacks is, is a brand and what it lacks is a real emotional connection for consumers. Now we're growing really well, numbers are going up, profits going up, volumes are going up, everybody in the business is happy. But the feeling was that something was missing and this emotional connection needed to be found. So we went to our history, we went to our libraries, we went to Orkney, we came to Denmark, we came here about a year, 18 months ago to investigate the bloodline dating all the way back. Because, as I said in my presentation this morning, consumers want authenticity, they want a real story, they want to scratch the surface and find there's depth, not scratch the surface and there's nothing there. So we knew we were only going to get to do this once and it would have to last 5, 10, 15 years. It wasn't going to be a short-term campaign. It was fundamentally important that we got to a product truth and a brand truth and it connect with the consumer. Orkney's great, great place for making whiskey, nightmare place to stay sometimes because of the weather. Um, the way we make our whiskey, as, as Gordon Motion explained today, is um, slightly different from other people. We spend a little bit more on our cast, wood policy, etc., and, and peat. But our story, our backstory, is not very Scottish. This um, 1468 gifting back from the Vikings to Scotland, um, being founded by Magnus Ewinson, who sounds not Scottish at all. We wanted to explore the, the nature of the people on Orkney. The fact that they are standing apart, they are slightly different, they are not part of the establishment. And bringing that to life was not easy. Now the hardest thing, the hard, and this is, this is the absolute truth, the hardest thing was not making it a stereotype, not making it horny helmets, axes, Kirk Douglas 1960s, the Vikings film, which everybody's grown up with Hollywood. It was to find not that angle of the Vikings. That design thing is really important, but their passion, their emotion, their adventure, their skill, their craft, their culture, their belief system resonates today. You know, as, the, as the world becomes increasingly secular and religions come and go and up and down, there's a kind of noble virtues aspect to the Vikings, the way they lived their life, the way they were disciplined, the way they organized their families and, and their, their, um, their trade and their, their exploration. That's interesting. And that for us was the, the touch point where we wanted to start our design. So then we worked with some Danish people, we worked with some Scottish people, and we did a lot of homework, a lot of homework, particularly in Orkney and in Denmark, to find something that was authentic, real, grounded, could, could hopefully, touch wood, stand the test of time. And you never know, but we're very comfortable with where we've got to. And the packaging had to reflect that. And our current packaging, our old packaging, was fine, mm -hmm. but it had become a little bit industry standard, people had copied it, it was looking a little bit tired and a little bit dated, so we needed to make a big step forward. And that had to happen with design. But you couldn't just have a designer design something, it needed to be grounded and, and, and rooted in something. And when we saw the Staff Kirk, the, the Stave Church, the wooden church in um, Burness, and we saw the carvings on it, we just went, wow, wow. How could we, could we take that and apply it to a bottle? Is that possible? How, how expensive is that going to be? You know? and, and ultimately, it could be done. It was possible. It was slightly more expensive. But then when you pick up that bottle and you feel that bottle and you taste that great liquid, and it's got Viking honour or Viking pride or Viking scars, consumers will look at that and go, wow, somebody's really thought about this. And if they do scratch the surface and they go back and investigate us, you can it's true. See that tonight, mm. It's not bullshit. <laughs> it's not made up. It's actually factually accurate. And I think that's what will resonate. That's what consumers will buy into. So, long answer to a short question. When did you first start working on this? How long did it take you to come to the point where we are right now? 
Yeah. Well, originally I worked at Highland Park from 2005 to 2010, and it was very much we'd won Best Spirit in the World, and everything was geared towards why do we win Best Spirit in the World? It's about our production, it's about our way of making whiskey. So that ticked the box for those five years. This journey started in May 2015 when I took this brand back on. I'd been off Highland Park and on other things in our company and came back. And it was very much a case of I had to undo some of the things I'd done before and unlearn what I had learned. And then ultimately say, how do I dial up the emotion in this brand? How do I dial up the design in this brand? How do I dial up the consumer passion for this brand? And that had to come through design because that's the first touch point rooted in a product truth, a, a place, a geography, and then not rush it, and not take time, sorry, not take the time, not rush it. And I wanted to get this done in six months, and it took me probably about nine months to do all the research, it took me another six months to find agencies that could get what we were talking about, talking to our production people about how can we get glass guys to make this, how can this be possible, and then making sure it's accurate not uh, inspired by, it's actually looking at those carvings from 800 years ago and working with glass designers to say, get that into glass. No, no, don't say you can't do that, but get it into glass, finding a way to solve it. So it took a lot longer than I wanted it to, but um, I think it's worth the wait. I think it's, I'm really happy with where we've landed. Well, you must be very proud of that. Uh, I'm, I'm, yes, the short answer, I am proud today. I think we've got, the first part of our journey, you know, we've got to, we've left the shore, we've gone to an island, we're safe, we've got all this material, and then we're now looking at the horizon, and we're looking at new markets, and looking at new consumers, and going, are we confident with what we've created? We love our liquid, our liquid's fantastic, we now think our, our, our packaging matches to the emotion, and we have a rich tapestry of stories now behind the brand which are all grounded, some in myths and legends, as, as we'll discover with, with Jim tonight, which is going to be good fun. And, but it's the nine noble virtues, it's the Viking culture, it's their... I mean, they, they, they ran Europe for the thick end of 900 years. They were very, very good at what they do. It's not a horny helmet axe culture. They had way more to them. And I think, um, ironically, it's a brand from Scotland that will probably explain the Vikings to the rest of the world which is ironic in itself.